I'm not sure about you, but I'm starting to get nervous already. Manchester United against Atletico Madrid on Tuesday night in the Champions League after a one-all draw away against Atletico in the first leg. Can Mr. Champions League. What a well-timed hat trick that was from Ronaldo against Spurs at the weekend. This video is me previewing the game against Atletico. We're going to take a look at some team news. We're going to take a look at the tactical breakdown, really, of what happened in that first leg and take a look at what I think is going to be the starting 11 for this game against Atletico on Tuesday. Arguably, a game which could pretty much end our season, right? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. As always, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. If you enjoyed the video by the end of it, go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell as well. You get ping every time I go live. But let's take a look and let's discuss that first leg, right? One all against Atletico away from home. And it was a game where Manchester United, let's be honest, we were played off the park for quite a lot of it. Uh, without McTominay in midfield, uh, Fred was positioned back as a number six. Did he do it? Not particularly well. While well, Felix with an early goal, Manchester United were really just poor. Really poor in the first half there. Obviously, we improved and Elanga came off the bench and effectively saved us. But United cannot afford to have the same sort of performance against Atletico in this game. If we go down here and we look at who started that game against Atletico, what lessons can we learn from that? Number one. Don't play Victor Lindelof at right back. It was a strange decision by Ralph Ragnick, one which nearly completely backfired uh, and backfired enough that I never want to see it again. Also, we didn't have McTominay in that midfield there. I think he was suspended or was he injured? I can't remember which one. doesn't really matter. Now, he's trained ahead of this game to, uh, tomorrow. We've got Bruno Fernandes is back in training. Luke Shaw's back in training. And so is Scott McTominay. We don't know who's going to start, though, but we'll take a look at that when we look at the team next. As I said, they are the two main... Issues really we didn't we had in that team against Atletico Madrid. Victor Lindelof being right back was a, a strange decision which shouldn't happen again. And Fred playing in the number six role, concerning. Now this team here, this is the team that played against Spurs at the weekend, and I thought I tell you what, I thought Matic was fantastic in that number six role, but as we all know, Matic is unlikely to be able to start two games of that caliber in the space of a few days. We'll get into that position soon. But looking at the back five, right? It was Maguire alongside Varane with Delot, Tedez as the fullbacks and De Gea in goal. We all know where the big concern was, of course. And that was with Harry Maguire. Obviously, I said in my match reaction that that own goal, right? Of course, I can't remember who was it. Um, I can't remember who it was in the middle, who was offside. Was it Romero? Either way, he was completely offside, but Maguire kind of had to go for that, didn't he? Kind of had to go for that tackle. If, it get, if he completely left it and he was onside, he would have got slated for that as well. Man United should not have allowed it to get into that position in the first place. It was poor defending uh, in the midfield, no pressure on the ball, ball going out wide, X, Y, Z. But Harry Maguire, I would love to see Victor Lindelof start here against Rafael Varane. And I've praised Ralph Rangnick for so many things that I feel he's got right as Manchester United interim manager so far. I don't think... Trusting and giving that loyalty to Harry Maguire is one of those successes. I think it's been a mistake. I hope it's not a mistake that hurts Manchester United against Atletico, but I think he will start there. Now, there's real questions there about who starts in the, on the fullback positions. Uh, I think it, it will be Delo and I think it will be Tellez. But I tell you what, this guy here, I've highlighted him on the pitch because he was absolutely fantastic. Lodi, down the left-hand side, a complete and utter thorn in United's side. Victor Lindov had no idea really what to do. First time I've ever probably watched him play and he was fantastic. I imagine the same thing's going to be tried again at Old Trafford on Tuesday. Maybe that's the reason why you're going to see Aaron Wan-Bissaka in there ahead of Diogo Delo. But I think across the course of um, Ralph Ragnick's tenure as interim manager, Delo is somebody who's really impressed and I think he deserves to keep that place in that team. Now Luke Shaw, whether he starts or not, will pretty much depend on fitness. But given that he's missed the last couple of games, I think it was with COVID, wasn't it? Got COVID at the same time as Varane. I don't think Luke Shaw will be starting in this game, but he might be. So let's not rule it out. But Tellez, again, when it comes to their win backs here, we know that's where Atletico Madrid are really going to play down. When it comes to them being out of possession, it's going to be their two, their two, their two up front are going to be dropping deep. Was it Correa was causing all sorts of problems to Manchester United simply because of the intensity of how Atletico Madrid play. You know they're going to do that again. That is the start of play of the Atletico Madrid. Simple as that. And United can ill afford to have the same sort of start that we had away in Spain. And that 
is why there are so many questions about who starts in this midfield three. Now, you let me know who you would start in the comments below. As I said, this is who started against Spurs at the weekend. Who would be your three? Now, on paper, seeing as Bruno Fernandes is back, you may well see something like that. You could see Matic drop into the bench. As I said, I'd be very surprised to see Matic start in both games in the space of a few days. And Fred dropping into a sort of role that he played away at Atletico Madrid. In my opinion, this does not offer the balance that we need to control the game against Atletico Madrid on Tuesday night. And I feel sorry for him, but I think you're going to see Paul Popper drop to the bench. Now, in the first leg, Paul Popper was pretty much invisible. And I'll tell you a major reason why he was invisible. Let me just get these players into position. I think Fred will probably be on the right of a midfield three there. There was one major reason I would say that Paul Pogba was kind of invisible against the Let's Go Madrid in the first leg, and that was this man, Condobbia. Unfortunately, he's going to be fit to play. He's travelled with the Atletico Madrid team. He showed what it is to be a proper number six in that game. Really get Pogba, Pogba and Bruno both in that game. Atletico Madrid just gave them no space at all on the ball. Every time they had the ball, there was two players around him. And they, and they maintain that intensity for the entire game. Don't really know how they do it, but that's just the fitness of a Diego Simeone team. They will do the, ga they will do the same again on Tuesday. And I think you're going to see McTominay come in there, and I think you're going to see Fred play there. First of all, that is Fred's best position. Fantastic game that he played against Spurs, and that was because he had Matic behind him, and it allowed Fred just to do what he does best, and that's really go aggressively in for the tackle, try and win the ball back, and bring it forward. And he brought it forward uh, really, as I said, fantastically well against Spurs. I want, I think out of all our midfielders, Fred starting is probably the only guarantee. McTominay, will he be 100% fit? We don't know. Bruno, will he be 100% fit? I don't know. Where does Paul Pogba fit in that team? I don't know. Matic, will he be fit? Can he play two games in three days? I don't know. The only one I know will start this game is Fred. And what a turn of events that is. But if he's, if he's fit and ready to play, I'm 100% bringing Bruno back in this team. As I, the, 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 the place where Manchester United really lost that first half against Atletico Madrid was inside this area. Every time Atletico Madrid didn't have the ball, they pressed and squeezed us until we made a mistake. Every time they did have the ball, they were able to move around our midfield far too easily. That has to change on Tuesday. But I think it's going to be a midfield three there of Fred... Bruno with McTominay behind them. Uh, I would definitely bring on Matic for the last 25, 30 minutes or so, as we saw again away at Atletico Madrid. When that happened, that's when United got the element of control back into the game. And that's when Elanga was allowed to score. Was it Ronaldo dropped a little bit deeper, flicked it to Bruno. Bruno's through ball. And then Elanga made no mistake with a fantastic clinical finish. I think it's going to be that midfield three there. And I worry about how well he played there. Condobby was excellent. Koke, Koke sorry. Looks like he's going to be back there, captain. Although Thomas Lamar's injured. Look, Atletico Madrid are a good team. Even if they've got some injuries, as they showed in the first leg without so many key players, they can definitely damage United. And it, it leaves us with the front three. Now, the front three that started there against Spurs at the weekend, Sancho, Rashford and Ronaldo. Of course it's Ronaldo. And I'm going to get on to Mr. Champions League in a minute. Sancho and Rashford, they kind of switch wings. But look, I think there's one guarantee here, and that's that Jaden Sancho starts. And I would like to see him more on the right hand side. I just prefer to. I just prefer it. I just prefer it. He's excellent on the left hand side. Scored there from this again against City, for example. His form in the last six to eight games been magnificent. Definitely, Man United's player was it player of the month for February? I think he got, and he's on for it in March as well. Sancho looks red hot, and we need to play through him. And the complete, uh, incomplete um, opposite, if you want to call it that, Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford is absolutely down in the dumps right now. He's a man who's bereft of confidence. He's a man who just, he's not the Rashford that we've seen. And I don't think there's any chance that he really should be starting this game. I think it absolutely has to be Anthony Elanga. Not just for the fact that he scored the goal in the first leg, but just Elanga brings a, a, a refreshing energy. And enthusiasm to that role that comes from the naivety of being a youth player. You can't really, you're not scared of a mistake because you never really made that many so far. Elanga, it should be Elanga and Sancho. And of course, of course, of course, it's all about this man, isn't it? It really is. If Man United get through to the quarterfinals, 
Ronaldo is going to play a key, key part in it. And I'll tell you what, and this is exactly what I've been saying all season long. It's the one thing that Zidane got spot on ahead of any manager in world football. He managed Ronaldo's game time. Now, maybe Ranit didn't do that personally. Okay, he was missing for the game against City. So he had a bit of an extra rest. But look at what that extra rest did for Ronaldo. I'm really glad that after this Atletico Madrid game, we've got some, uh, what is it, two weeks off, basically, because of the Liverpool game that got postponed because of their FA Cup involvement. It means United have got a break. And this pretty much is the make or break of United's season, right? Looking at that top four chase, Arsenal are absolutely favourites for that top four now. They're ahead of us, I think, well, was it behind us by one point? Anyway, you've got three games in hand. I think they're ahead of us by one point too. Arsenal are finishing the top four unless there's an absolute balls up. So the only way, right, realistically, we're going to get into the top four this year. And that, I'm not saying that with a pinch of salt as well, by winning the goddamn Champions League. So this game on Tuesday night is everything. And Ronaldo will give everything for it. Just like he gave everything against Spurs. Absolutely magnificent hat trick. The first goal, incredible strike. The second goal, fantastic movement. The third goal, dominant header. What a header that was. What a hat trick that was. And what a man he is. 37 years old, 807 career goals. Five Champions Leagues. Can he make it six with United this year? As you can see from the thumbnail, I'd love to see that. And I'm sure you would too. But for me, that would be the 11 I think we'll see. I would say the biggest questions, as the case of Manchester United, pretty much every game this season, all revolve around the midfield. Pogba is unfortunate to miss out in this team, but I think that's going to happen. I think you, if Bruno's fit to start, I think he will start. I think you'll see Pogba coming on uh, for the last, like, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, depending on what happens. Maybe it'll be Fred dropping into the McTominay position and, and Pogba coming on there. I don't know if, if United are down and out, then maybe he'll bring on uh, Pogba for McTominay. I don't know. All right. But this is my starting 11. Lodi and Kondobia I've named as the two players there who, for me, caused us the most problems in the first leg. I think it should be Delo at right back. It definitely shouldn't be Victor Lindelof at right back. And maybe it'll be Wan Masaka, depending on how uh, aggressive, I suppose, Ralph Rannick wants to go. But that's my team. Do you think that team will win? Do you think United will win? Do you think we will hear the lovely Champions League anthem again in the quarterfinals? I don't know. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But I'm going to leave you with that little video I made at the intro because I tell you what, it's starting to get me excited. Will United get into the Champions League quarterfinals? Will Ronaldo do it for us on the night? You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Yeah.